often, my dear colleagues, uh, today if we discuss it below in my previous lectures, we today will continue a topic uh, drug-inducing liver injury and we will stop on uh, our, uh, laws, uh, shy laws. It's um, very important because uh, <coughs> When we're talking about drug-induced liver injury, we're talking about importance uh, to note it, to find it in early stage or in clinical trials in, uh, and even before in toxicology uh, when in non-clinical trials too. Uh, <coughs> my name is uh, Alena Cordera. I am a qualified person for and GCK Pharma, clinical expert with clinical um, experience and scientific background. Uh, we will uh, continue our clinical pharmacovigilance uh, lecture because what I see and uh, your interest and, and question which I receive in my private messages in uh, LinkedIn and Facebook that uh, uh, many questions coming from uh, medical doctors because they meet uh, this uh, situation in daily practice and question is how manage it is one uh, side of problem. Another uh, problem that uh, hepatoxic drug liver injury and clinical trials I received many uh, questions about it too. Shai's law refers to the li uh, likelihood of developing alpha loving exposure to a hepatoxic drug. According to uh, Shai's law, for every 10 patients who develop dendite secondary to hepatocellular injury during a clinical trial, one patient will develop ILF involving coagulopathy or encephalopathy. Thames Corollary states that for every 10 cases of IL-10 alanine transferase more than 10 times the, uh, more than OLN in a clinical trial, there will be one instance of size law. The premarketing clinical evolution of drug induced liver injury, the FDA has defined the risk of development severe daily drug induced, uh, induced liver injury based on uh, size law. Indica indicators of a potential for severe uh, uh, drug induced liver injury. An excess of aminal transferase uh, AT elevation uh, to more than 3, OLN compared to a control group, market elevation of ET. Uh, uh, alanine transferase to 5, 10, or 20, or LN in modest numbers of subjects in the drug treated versus the control group, one of more cases of newly elevated total serum bilirubin to more 2. OLN is a setting of hepatocellular injury when other co uh, causes of liver injury have been excluded. Drug-induced liver injury in clinical trials. What kind of question you should ask a clinical investigator or, for example, a clinical monitor of what question should be controlled? Uh, it's an um, important question. One, first one, it's are there any isolated cases in the data, uh, data set? How are changes across different liver tests correlated and how to do those correlation differ between treatment groups? What is the timing of elevation of liver test is in active treatment and comparator RMS? Is there a window of flexibility in the active treatment IRM? Are shifts from baseline different between treatment groups? Is there any evidence for a dose-response relationship? What do time profiles of individual liver test or liver test uh, panels look like? Are liver test changes absorbed while the patient is on a treatment transient or progressing? What do time profiles look like after treatment is stopped? 
How does intake of certain concomitant medication on concurrence or resolution of certain adverse events relate to time profiles of liver tests? Are liver test elevation correlated with the desired therapeutic effect on the drug? Are liver test elevation associated with non-liver side effects of other laboratory abnormalities? Are liver test elevation associated with pharmacokinetic parameters of the drug, if it available? Are there other forms of liver injury present besides hepatocellular, such as holistatic or mixed liver injury, or is there acute or chronic liver failure? Types of uh, drug-induced liver signals in clinical trials. An imbalance uh, among study st subjects with elevation of serum liver in the enzymes in randomized controlled trials between study drug and placebo or comparator. Clinically significant drug induced liver injury cases marked by liver related symptoms, elevation of bilirubin, gendize, and or coholopathy. Three, sh uh, uh, three shows for diagnosis of DILI, drug-induced liver injury. An international expert group proposes the following three shows for a diagnosis of drug-induced liver injury. I'll tell you more than five OLN. Alanine transferase value more or equal to OLN. I'll tell you um, more three uh, OLN and uh, TB more the two uh, OLN. By cameras, the patterns of living jar and ratio air value. The ratio air value of ILT or IST when ILT is lacking activity to LP activity expressed as multiplies of OLN is used to categorize the injury pattern of drug-induced liver injury as hepatocellular, holistatic or mixed. And you see this formula, how you can account uh, the ratio. It's, um, you can use in daily practice too, because um, these patterns are uh, more, um, uh, more using uh, in clinical trials. Hepatocellular injury, the peak elevation of serum ILT is substantially higher than the OLN with no or minimal elevation of serum ILP. Holistatic injury, the peak elevation of ILP is substantially higher than the OLE and the R value is less too. Mixed time injury, hepatocellular holistatic, the R value is more than 2 and less than 5. Dili severity gradient scales. Uh, it's uh, using United States Drug Industry Liver Injury Network. Uh, in FDA guidance, the term several liver injury is used to describe irreversible hepatic failure. And it's a count five stage. First stage is mild, elevated ILT and O ILP but TBL less 1.5. Moderate stage, elevated ILT and O ILP and TBL more or equal 2.5 mg on deciliter or INR more than 1.5. Uh, third stage is moderate elevated ILT, LP, TBL, and O, INR, and hospitalization on ongoing hospitalization prolonged due to DILI. Severe, fourth stage, elevated ILT and O, LP, and TBL, more or equivalent 2.5 mg or deciliter, and at least one the following criteria hepatic failure. INR more 1.5 ascites or encephalopathy or the organ failure due to uh, drug induced liver injury. And fatal, it's a uh, death or liver transplantation due, due to drug liver injury. And you see 
uh, how it's called is it's uh, ILP it's a choline phosphatase ILT it's alanine amino transferase DILI drug inducing liver injury INR it's international normalized ratio TBL totem serum bilirubin e OLN upper limit of normal discontinuation of treatment uh, it's uh, you should know too it's when uh, you should discontinue to, uh, to give this drug stopping rules the United States FDA guidance recommends that discontinuation of treatment should be considered in pre-marketed clinical studies if any of the following occur ILTA or IST uh, more uh, more than eight uh, upper limited norma ILT or IST more than five uh, upper limited norma for more than two weeks ILT or IST more than three upper limited normal at TBL uh, more than two upper limited normal or international ratio more than one point five or ILT or IST in uh, enzyme transferase uh, more than three uh, upper limited norm with the appearance of fatigue, noise of a meeting, right upper quadrant pain or tenderness, fever, rash and oisinophilia more than 5%. Dili severity grade scales international Dili expert working group uh, divided on four stages it's mild stage, moderate, severe and fatal. It's same approaches uh, and you see this uh, gra uh, gradient scale that mild I'll tear more or equal 5 uh, upper uh, limited normal or ILP uh, more than or equal to oil and antibial uh, less to upper limited normal moderate I'll tear more uh, or equal 5 upper limited norma or ILP uh, more uh, or equal to upper limited norma at TBL uh, more uh, um, less than two or symptomatic hepatitis severe ILT more or equal five or limited norma or ILP more or equal to uh, upper limited norma at TBL more uh, or equal to upper limited norma or symptomatic hepatitis at least one the following criteria international rate more or equal to 1.5 ascites and or encephalopathy uh, disease duration fatal transplantation this or liver transplantation due to liver injury now we will have on pay you attention uh, on RUCAM, it's Russell O'Clough causality assessment method. It's, um, you should know it if you're working in clinical trials, for example, as a uh, pharmacovisual physician, clinical expert or clinical monitor who uh, should uh, uh, have this knowledge too. RUCAM, uh, Rusev, Uclav causality assessment message, which was developed by the Council for International Organization for Medical Sciences in the uh, Maria and Victoria scale. Based uh, this method on scores calculated for Ucam, the likelihood of a drug induced event is rated as follows less zero, drug excluded. Uh, 1, 2 unlikely, 3, 5 possible, 6, 8 probably, and more than 8 highly probably. Rucam is widely used by clinicians as pharmaceutical, uh, the pharmaceutical industry and regulatory agencies to assess the risk of drug uh, induced liver injury. Rose, uh, Uclav casualty assessment method, RUCAM, is quantifying the strength of association between a liver injury and the medication implicated as causing the injury. Developed on the whole basis by consensus opinion among hepatoxicity experts, composite of several different criteria, the time to onset, clinical course, risk factors, concomitant drugs, non-drug causes, published information on hepatoxicity, and the response to any administration. 
Scoring ranges from minus e to plus 14 with higher value signified a greater degree of association. Uh, this method has limitation, poor inter-rate reliability and arbitrary scoring, for example, for alcohol use. As you see this scale, uh, uh, this uh, has diagnostic score, total score, as, as we discussed it uh, below, it's uh, more or equal 8, highly likely uh, total score, 6, 7 probable, 3, po uh, three 5 possible and less 2 unlikely. And le uh, you see uh, risks, uh, you know, and latency uh, 0 plus 2, courses after the challenge minus 2 plus 3, risk factors uh, O0 plus 2, communication minus 3 to 0 O, exclusion of other etiologies minus 3 to plus 2, a data on drug hepatoxicity O2 plus 2 and rechallenge uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, 2 plus 3. For example, case a 32 year old female with no prior history suggestive of liver disease was prescribed at a Dalac 400 mg and paracetamol 500 mg fixed dose combination twice daily as an algesic for fracture of right forearm following a fall. Liver function test before starting at a Dalac via within normal limits. Within 48 hours of drug intake, she developed noisy and vomiting. There was no associated abdominal pain, abdominal distension, constipation, obstipation or fever. Her symptoms uh, gradually worsened. On a day three, she became drowsy and hysteric. And admission to hospital, the patient was drowsy but responsive, hysteric, and had flapping tremors, suggestive of grade 2 hepatic encephalopathy, uh, vast having criteria. The laboratory investigation revealed de deranged liver function test with total bilirubin of 4.3 mg on deciliter, direct to 2 mg on deciliter, aspartate. Transaminase, IST of 3.623 uh, on liter, alanine trans, uh, transaminase, IST of 6 or 60 U on liter, and alkaline phosphatase, ILP of uh, 229 U uh, on liter. Her international malaise ratio was 6.7 and serum creatinine was 1.6 mg on deciliter. Arterial blood gas analysis revealed several metabolic and lactic acidosis serum lactate 10.5 mm on liter with a pH of 6.9 and bicarbonate of 2.9 mg make you on liter. She also had recurrent episodes of hypoglycemia and arterial ammonia levels was 330 millimol on liter admission. The ultrasound showed liver size on 12.4 cm with normal outline hypoechogenity. Doppler of hepatoportal axis was unremarkable. Computerized tomography CT of head showed enhancement of giri, insulti with uh, chinking of the ventricle suggestive of cerebral edema. Hepatitis B surface antigen, IgM hepatitis B core antibody, antihepatitis T virus antibody, serologies for hepatitis A, hepatitis E, cytomegalovirus, virus, Epstein-Barr virus, and herpes simplex virus, and autoimmune markers, including antinuclear, antimitochondrial, anti-smooth muscle, anti-liver kidney, kidney muscle antibodies were all negative. Serum concentration of immunoglobulin and ceruloplasmin were also with normal range. The main score as admission was 38 in single the patient fulfilled the King's Colex prognostic criteria. The family was con 
Consellage for an organ liver transplantation which was declined. The patient was conservatively managed in the intensive care with, with antihepatic coma, regime and anti edema measures, and acetylcysteine infusion, 25 dextrose infusion, broad spectrum antibiotic hemodialysis for echidrenal ferro and other supportive care. However, her sensorium progressively worsened to grade for encephalopathy. She rapidly deteriorated and succumbed on the fourth day of her illness due to rising intracranial tension and multiply organ dysfunction. Due Rukam casualty assessment score of case, we see hepatellorenzari case and score. Hepatellorenzari, time of onset from the beginning of the drug uh, my, uh, last five days from the cessation of the drugs uh, last 15 days you see the score plus one plus one course changing in LT level non-applicable decrease in BN peak OLN after stopping drugs non-applicable score plus one risk factors alcohol pregnancy absence zero age uh, less 55 years zero concomitant drugs incompatible zero exclusion of other causes rule it out to cause in group one two plus two Exclusion of other causes, rule it after all causes in group 1, 2, plus 2. Previous formation of the hepatoxity of the drug reaction labeling product characteristic score plus 2. Characteristics, response to readmissions not done, 0. Total score probably, 7. If you see that when you count all a score, you see that it is 0. It's why the Rukam scale limitation the clinical trial setting with the drugs is they have this limitation. The Rukam scale awards points for potential risk factors such as pregnancy and excessive alcohol consumption. However, patients in these categories are often excluded from clinical trials. Risk factors that may be specific for certain new drug or biological agent in development, including drug drug or the disease drug interaction or genetic markers that signify heightening susceptibility to drug induced liver injury are not accounted for the RUCAM. One of the criteria including is the RUCAM scale is a response to re-administration of a suspected causative drug rechallenge, while rechallenge can be justified in some situation in clinical practice, it is not recommended in most clinical trial settings. The MV scale, uh, also known as the clinical diagnostic scale, is modified version of the OMS RUCAM scale, but it has limitations including the focus on hypertensivity features of drug-inducing liver injury, which are not always present. Reliance on a small number of expert opinions, poor performance in cases involving a typical presentation of long latency, and inadequate concordance with CIOM through CAM scale. I... Uh, present you reference which I use for my lecture. You can use it too in your daily practice and uh, I'd be very um, thankful for your question, uh, for your feedback. Uh, you can leave uh, your comments uh, under my video and uh, I, I will be thankful for your question. And next, my lectures, I will show um, cases, real cases too. Uh, it uh, will be acetamifen induced liver in, uh, induced liver injury and other the drug induced liver injury and how manage it because as you see, this problem is uh, now play a great role in uh, practical medicine uh, activity, medical activity. And uh, what I would like to say too, is that uh, afterwards we will uh, talk about, it's like announcement, uh, drug-drug uh, interaction, dry device interaction, 
Plus, it will be condition like drug induced liver injury, it will be kidney, <coughs> drug kidney induced injury, it will be uh, pathological condition uh, influence on blood platelet and uh, um, another because uh, interesting too, for example, today I have found uh, coming back for drug induced liver injury situation when uh, after COVID uh, um, was drug uh, vaccination uh, was um, reflected uh, all uh, signs and symptoms drug induced liver injury it was a six series and you can find it in my profile in LinkedIn and I pay attention that all my lectures you can one in LinkedIn to on my profile and uh, if you will subscribe on my channel you will have all news of my lectures and you can be open to ask any question plus what I want to organize and I will be thankful for your feedback that we can collect all your questions if we can organize as a round table where we can discuss uh, all your needs and afterwards I think we will together uh, we became close on one step to solving uh, problems. Why? Because uh, what I see again coming back for COVID and uh, I uh, make some um, screening of literature search and um, myocarditis, uh, pericarditis and uh, um, another for example uh, 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 um, uh, never a neurological amyotrophy now um, uh, appears after uh, this uh, pathological uh, condition uh, appears after vaccination. I voted its cases, uh, uh, for example, drug induced liver injury, serious cares, it was six cases, serious cases. And uh, interesting to see, um, to find out uh, is these cases, for example, reflect disproportionality, is it signal or no? Uh, please follow my lectures, follow my YouTube channel and I think uh, I will, uh, if you follow uh, my uh, YouTube channels and LinkedIn profile, you will find new information because I want that every our medical doctors, physician or specific uh, medical doctors for gastroenterology, surgery, um, hepatologist, uh, cardiologist can meet uh, adverse events and we should know this pathological condition as adverse events if we uh, must not even have to, we must to have knowledge uh, to manage these conditions. Uh, see you later and have a nice day, uh, my dear colleagues.